This short break from civilization is brought to you by the Ford Bronco. Get back out there. The Ford Bronco. Built wild. Learn more at Ford.com slash Bronco. You're listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. And welcome to episode 603 of the Sonic Society, the world's greatest showcase of modern audio theater. I'm Jack Ward. And I'm David Alt. Good morning, everyone. Now, I've been looking forward to this week's episode for quite some time. That's right, David. Some episodes back, you were talking about your love of the unseen hour, and we were able to connect with James Carney. Mm. Does that mean his family were circus carnies back in the day? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. And he recommended episode 42, Sciatica. And along with that, we're going to have a second short, The Dance of the Gigantic Vermin. So we have a full slate of hilarity ahead. And as you know, it all begins right here on the Sonic Society. Shut your eyes. Stop your ears. Cast your mind back to the formless days of your own formation. The unscaled, fractured memories of a persona coalescing, budding from a seed fragment of self. Of the flaws and fault lines that run, run from your very center your very origin, and which have never healed or knit together, but only wait to crack, erupt, and shatter at the lightest touch, at the unseen hour. The city of Karkos sits at a center of an ancient and fallen empire. A cruel and exploitative reign that engulfed the planet and then receded, leaving a world touched and traumatized by its progress. History books filled with the brutal grandeur of its exploits. And this modern metropolis, with its streets and squares carved into the Earth's surface, a bloody sigil pressed there by a titan hand that has crushed the life from nations. And yet, the strokes of this dread glyph are populated still by good-natured people, communities that live simple, charming lives and rarely consider the darker places where even now a shadowy figure dons their black rubber gloves to go about a much less wholesome business. you go, my little friend, all dressed and painted, ready for someone to take you to a new... Hello? Who's there? Is there somebody? Oh, it's you. But what are you? Arranged like so. 
Yes, it, it, it almost looks as if, the, as if the killer was trying to make it look like this man had a long, bushy tail. You, you see the way the, the flesh has been stripped back there. Yes, it's impressive in its way. <laughs> Golly, though, it's, a, it's, it's, it's certainly not the sort of a crime scene that should really be seen by a, by a civilian of any sort. Eh? You ask me, you know, a civilian of some sort. <laughs> A concert violinist and childhood friend of this police detective who really has no reason, no place at all, being on an active and very traumatizing crime scene. <laughs> oh my goodness, there's a little bit about me there, in case you were wondering. Yes! Yes! It really is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an unnecessarily gruesome scene. It's horrible. It, it's, it, 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 it's funny, I, I, I can't. Quite place, but it reminds me of something, you know. I, I can't, I can't quite recall. Oh, police, police! Yes, yes. All right, we get the message. I'm, I'm the police, Senora Sob Michael. What is the matter? Oh, there's been an horrible murder. I'm ill. There's been one here too, I guess. So. Oh, I'm about to drop dead of all this drug. Oh, it's awful. Oh, oh yes, yes. Um, someone should. Probably cover all this up. Oh, um, but, but before we do, what what's all this about another murder? Sure, surely we are not dealing with some sort of a serial killer. <laughs> Can you describe the scene of this second atrocity? Oh, it was an awful thing. I, I was going into a little art gallery, don't we? You know, oh, uh, uh, Senora Flack Dargans, but she's a nice lady. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But she's been murdered. Oh, and the card. <laughs> Honestly, they, they carved her up dreadfully. Something rotten. I, I, oh, I don't even want to say what it looked like. Oh, say what it looked like, do. No, I just said I didn't want to say what it looked like. No, it, it looked like she had big old bunny ears. Oh. Bunny ears? First, a bushy-tailed squirrel, what makes puppets, and a big-eared rabbit who collects pretty things. Rufus, I remember it too. It's from that book, From When We Was Children. But wasn't that written by... Yes. For my father, for me and my half-sister. But only a few people ever had a copy of it. No, not his most popular work. I usually uh, stuck to the political science stuff. But, you know. <laughs> we must proceed with care. Come to my childhood home. My mother will surely still have a copy. Quick, we'll take my compact and affordable European car. But what about all these dead bodies? No time! Someone else can have them! <laughs> Into the tuck tuck! Bye! Rufus, darling, you've come to visit me. Yes. Hello, Mother. <laughs> Hello, Auntie Imogen. What a beauty you are. I can hardly believe you're my friend's mother. Yep, stop that. <laughs> just, just being nice, just being charming. Yeah, I'm watching you. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't feel very young. My poor back has been giving me trouble. Muscle? No! <laughs> There's no time! All right. Mother, 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 do you remember that children's book that Fox's father wrote? Oh, you mean one ocelot eats each offering of oblique oilet? Oui, oui. Yes, that's the one. I remember now the, the whole plot was about an ocelot who performed an interdimensional blood ritual mm -hmm. by, by violently devouring a sequence of animals. Yes. Yeah, didn't top the bestsellers. <laughs> but of course we have a copy here. Of course we do. Yes, I keep all the books alphabetized in this upright monologue. <gasps> 7.40am. Platform 5, ticket, barrier, long walk to carriage 3. This is me. Every morning, the commuter. The good thing about where I live is it's the last station on the line, which also means it is the first. Whatever the weather, I am guaranteed a seat before anybody else. Unless the weather is snow, in which case I'm not guaranteed a train at all. First one here, and I already know exactly where I'm heading. Front of the coach, fourth row back, window. Every time, and I mean every time. I never set out to have the same seat, but once you get into a routine, it's hard to break from it. And uh, now this chair feels so part of my life, I'm almost contemplated hanging a picture up on the wall beside it. 
I would like to say that's a joke. But no. <laughs> the point is, I have marked my territory without having to piss on anything, which is good, because I'm pretty sure that's frowned upon. I sit back and try to relax the muscles and joints, calm myself. I'm here now as I half watch the latecomers arrive and stand holding the rail, their eyes listless, their bodies idle, bags of flesh trying not to slap each other. <laughs> Maybe I'm a bit smug about this, but so what? I pay nearly £4,000 a year for a season ticket, so I think I'm perfectly entitled not only to a comfortable journey, but also little pleasure at the expense of the seatless. <laughs> Today was different, though, because for the first time, someone else was sitting in my seat. Now, he's an older gentleman, so I, I can't very well ask him to move. <laughs> I'm not a monster. Also, I haven't... I didn't reserve it. So. <clears throat> I, I've been in the same seat for the last year. I've got to know the other commuters. Well, that's a lie. I haven't got to know them. The, the city broker whose call is so important that it cannot possibly wait. The tinny sounds of Love Island leaking through earphones. The endless parade of schoolchildren enjoying themselves. <laughs> Those 68 minutes on the rail uh, should be a solitary experience. The one thing I do not want to do is talk. I may have to recognize the faces of my fellow commuters, but that does not give them carte blanche to invite me into small talk, chin wags, shit chat. <laughs> Acknowledge, but don't engage. That's the rule. But I do not recognize this elderly figure now parked in my space. I'm intrigued. Or Already we're in danger of breaking the no conversation rule. Uh, uh, most people would do is shrug this off and find another seat, but this bugs me. Once an unknown and unsuspecting spanner is hurled into the works of your daily routine, it completely throws you off kilter. <laughs> what day is it? Who am I? Uh, what is that? Why does it feel like a Friday? Where am I going? Are you sure it's a Wednesday? Because it feels like a Friday. I am blinded by the threat of spontaneity and impulsiveness, which... I did not request, and it's impossible to simply ignore it. So I casually stride over to him. He's hunched in his coat, a maroon red scarf, tightly wound around his neck, skin the color of papier-mâché paste, and he's got his eyes closed in my seat. Asleep in my seat. Bastard. So naturally, I had to wake him up and give him a piece of my mind. So I, I, I mustered my courage and really let him have it with a... Lovely day we're having here. <laughs> he opens his eyes directly onto me. I almost have to take a step back. His eyes are grey, a pale grey, the colour of milk in a dark room. <laughs> The eye contact is so intense, he holds my gaze, and I immediately feel any sense of confidence drain away from me, along with the colour in my face. I smile awkwardly at him. He says nothing. Um, uh, guess you beat me to it. This is uh, usually uh, my seat. I, I decide to joke rather than simply stop talking. I, I was about to plonk myself next to him when he suddenly speaks. And worse than the eyes is the voice, a rasp like gas from a hog. You can't sit here, he rasps. If you sit here, you'll die. OK. <laughs> Alarm bells going off now. Uh, excuse me, I reply. Uh, 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 I'm protecting you, friend. Protecting me, I think. Friend? I think, here we go, I've, I've been trounced by a nut-nut, and all the other seats have been occupied now. Uh, the tables have turned, and now I'm the fleshy bag standing. So I decide to humour this little seer and his prophecy. OK, I ask him, how am I going to die then? Still looking at me intently, he explains in his harsh, grinding voice that when we pull into the next station, a rickety signal will fall and smash through the window glass of conveniently the exact seat I'm trying to sit in whereupon a large shard shall fall, directly lodging itself in my femoral artery. I'll be dead within minutes. He's still staring at me. Those grey eyes, never darting or flickering even for a half second, 
Whatever this nonsense he's babbling, he seems to be heavily convinced by it. He's either totally deluded or a very good actor. Not to say those two things can't be. <laughs> Mutually. <clears throat> And why specifically me? His intonation, you'll die. The emphasis was on the you'll, so he can blithely sit there and die, but I can't. <laughs> this is specifically my future he's prophesying. Aren't you going to die if you sit there? He responds, I'm not afraid of death. Of course not. <laughs> he's still looking at me intensely, and I think it's his way of trying to scare me off, but it's already become tiresome, and now I'm just pissed off. Look, for here, friend, it's too early in the morning for this. No, he yells. No, he yells it again and again and again. Coarse gravel swirling in his lungs. I look round to the other passengers for backup, but no one appears to have noticed this other man, or more likely no one wants to get involved. Understandable. In the end, I concede and stay standing, hand on the rail, beaten. We're pulling into the next station. Uh, maybe he might leave. Maybe this is just a temporary hiccup. Maybe shards, shards of shattered glass. The sound piercing my ears. Alarm bells shrill and discordant. The rest is blur. Gasps, screams. I see people duck. A baby cries. I'm suddenly on the floor. When I get to my feet, the old man is gone. But in his place is a large, shaggy piece of window pane embedded in the soft, cushiony chair, cotton bleeding out. Everyone's evacuated onto the platform. Apparently, part of the signal fell, smashing through the train window. A simple accident. Granted, a highly unlikely accident, but a, an accident all the same. I keep looking at the broken window and the empty seat that took the hit. I struggle to tear my eyes away from my, from the seat. And suddenly I spy the old man across the platform, giving me his trademark stare. He has removed his scarf. I feel a hundred winds rush through me. The throat is open. And I cannot hear him above the sound of the tannoy, but I see the lips move, the throat open as if to whisper, I didn't have anyone to warn me. See you tomorrow, friend. Freaky door! Have you have you come to steal my traditional herbal remedies? Oh, oh, it's you! I was afraid for a moment that it might be a murder or a... Oh no! But but why? Oh, 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 oh no! Murder! So much stabbing! Oh. Lomanac, this one's even worse than the others. Yes, it is, it is rather. <laughs> as, as you can see, both her arms and her legs have been almost entirely removed. Yes, I can see. Yes, just, just like the medicine brewing snake in one or slight is... <laughs> Terribly sorry. <laughs> Just like the medicine brewing steak in one ocelot eats each offering of oblique oilette. Ooh, you! <laughs> and of course, you know what this means. No, I do not actually. I remind you that I'm not a professional investigator like you, and I'm ill suited to the challenges of this adventure. I'll tell you what it means! 
You see, it confirms my theory. It is the book. I'm afraid, my friend, that your father is the prime suspect, and so few people have read this book. Unless, unless you, Fawkes. My, you, you've read it. Perhaps it was a mistake to bring you to these crime scenes after all. <laughs> but I could never have known that. But then, I, I read that awful book at a, at a very tender age. Perhaps, perhaps I was affected more than I thought. And of course, mm, but no, but no, this is, this is mere, this is mere speculation. All that we know, all that we know is that the next victim will surely be the big-eyed owl who runs the restaurant. Right. Do we know any owls? <laughs> <laughs> but it's Senor Kent, you fool. He runs the trattoria just around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> We may not be too late! Quickly! Follow me! a chicken with that? No, just as I... Oh, oh, no, I have so many regrets. Hurry! We're almost there! Oh, no! We're too late! Oh, poor Senor Kent. Disgustingly mutilated. <laughs> Here, I'll indicate the bit what I need, what I mean by pointing at it with my pencil here. No, you needn't do. No, it. no, look, this part, this. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. you, you touched it. Yes. <laughs> can, can, look, you see? Oh. Yes, this, this. Look, I'm gonna I can make up. it dance. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. You see, that's all they. Can you, can you look? I can! Yes, I see it all! Oh. Yes! Move on, please! Yes. Gosh! Who would have thunk it, eh? <sighs> Don't you see, oh. Fox? Don't you see? Yes, this I means do. <laughs> you do? Perfect! <laughs> and of course, you know that this means we must have disturbed the killer before they could finish their gruesome act. Which, of course, means in itself. Well, well first off, Fox, it means that you and I are off the hook. But also, the killer could still be. <coughs> There! There he is! Stop that shadowy figure! <laughs> Quick! He's getting on that bicycle! Help me with this tandem, folks! Hey, help! Ah, ah, he can never outpace us on this thing! Oh, look out for those stacked crates of vegetables! Oh, no! Oh. Phew, we missed them! Cracky! <laughs> Good thing, too. I'd hate to be involved in some kind of a produce-related mess. <laughs> you and me both! Look, he's going down that alleyway! We've got him now, Fox! He's gone. Vanished into thin air. If only this wasn't an exclusively audio-based medium, we would have been able to see who the killer was. <laughs> or at least gotten a sense of his build. Curse you, podcasts! <laughs> Look, an open manhole. He must have escaped through mysterious and mystical haunter, the little unsaid.
out the howl loud It's midnight in London town I stand here naked now In your headlight eyes I was weary of the tail chase I was hunting down my own mistakes Wandering homeless in disgrace When you pulled me aside When you seized me by the throat When you seized me by the throat I could have died and gone to heaven, dear To choke like this forever here Is to live between these notes And all the twisted anecdotes Give me all I need and more Give me all I need and more To get myself on the other side of that door One hundred wonders of the world Come tumbling from your fingertips One hundred thunderous hymns unfurl Before the shrine of your lips I know the ways a heart can break I've let my love pronounce me dead Left wastelands in my wake You lit fires up ahead And now the autumn dead dreams Rain down like falling leaves We let go of the fantasy We live the dream of of living free who knows what all this means i don't know what any of this means i don't need to anymore i don't need to anymore i'm gonna get myself on the other side of that door happily with all of my own insanities to look at you and to really see to feel you looking back at me to take what kindness i have left and cradle that through every storm i reserve it all for you now Though you deserve so much more Spit the supernova truth Spit the supernova truth In the face of any black hole Spilling lies too close to you To put myself to some good use Doing whatever it is I can do That is all I'm asking for That is all I'm asking for To get myself before On the other side of that door Darling, you're visiting me again. It must be my lucky week. Mother, you're in terrible danger. Don't you see it's Crick? It was Crick. He's, he's definitely the killer, even though we didn't see him and, and don't have any actual evidence. But the last sacrifice in the book is the nurturing cat and her little kitten. That's us. You and me, Mother. I'm your little kitten. <laughs> oh, don't be a silly little kitten, Rufus. Albert would never hurt me. But you can ask him yourself. He'll be here in a moment. What? 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 Ja! But why, why would he come here? Under what pretext? I've been meaning to tell you. Albert and I are, well, we've been dating. What? No! You are my mother! My dirty, dirty, dirty! Did you know about this, Fox? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, you know, people in the, in, the, in the later years of their lives having a full and rewarding romantic, you know? I'm, I'm all for it. So is my, my half-sister, Featherstone. Look, here they are now. Watch you, everyone. Imogen, my love. 
Hello, dear. <laughs> oh, Albert, darling, Rufus has got it into his head that the spate of murders this week has something to do with the children's book you wrote and that you're behind it all and have come to kill us. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, well, uh, let me put your mind at rest, Rufus. Uh, you see, I barely remember that book. I usually, as, as you know, write treatises on good governance and how to acquire political influence. Uh, that book, uh, what even was the title? Ah, uh, for one about the ritual that unseems reality and flings all consciousness into the abyss. Oh. It's called uh, uh, One Ocelot Eats Each Offering of Oblique. Oh, yeah. Away, oh, oh, Maybe it was her! Listen, uh, I wrote this book accidentally. Uh, in, a, in a haze of confusion after accidentally ordering an entire litre of wine with my dinner <laughs> at the Osteria on the corner, you know, between the Church of Chaos and the Institute of Unethical Practice. You know the one. It's, it's the one on the ley line. Uh, I don't remember writing it uh, or, or what it's about. All I can say is that I mean you no harm or, or your mother. <laughs> like you, son. You, you don't believe him. Do your mother. M mother? She's gone. Where's she gone? Imogen, where are you? I'm right here, my darlings. Oh, but, 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 Mother, what are you doing with that knife? I uh, thought it was supposed to be the uh, detective stride forth. Uh, she's also wearing the, the shadowy robes and the black rubber gloves of the murderer. Oh, no. Mamma mia! <laughs> Yes, why not? Entirely appropriate. I'm sorry you have to see this, Rufus, but it will all be over soon. We will all be released from this terrible farce of a reality. Imogen, darling, uh, what's come over you? This is how it has to be. There was a terrible significance to your book. It's all true. You and your children are to be the final sacrifice. Can't you feel it? The awful, dull ache of this conscious plane. The sense of dreadful repetition and inescapable pressure. It's unbearable. All oh, right, she's gone mad. <laughs> Have I? Or is this the way to free us all from this recurring hell? With this final sacrifice, I call upon Blind Oilet to breach the fabric of space and time and take us to him in his outer oubliette. Imogen, no. I'm your kitten, mother. I'm too young to die. And... <laughs> And so, <laughs> a ritual is completed, a reality is rent apart, and a world cast into darkness. Something that was twisted and wrong from the earliest days of its inception reaps the destruction it so richly deserves. And you too, dear listeners, must tumble into oblivion for a while until you wake again with us at the next Unseen Hour. We hope that you were enriched by The Unseen Hour, episode 42, Sciatica. <laughs> the Unseen Hour is recorded live and monthly. For live shows, see unseenhour.com. This episode was recorded at King's Place in King's Cross as part of the London Podcast Festival. It was performed tenderly by Bryce Stratford, Joey Timmons, and James Carney and featured a monologue written by Alex Lynch and performed by John Henry Fall. The musical guest was a little unsaid. I've lost my place. <laughs> the Unrecorded, who were live scoring this, also provided the theme music. The Unseen Hour is an Unseen Things production, created, written, and produced by James Carney, and the podcast is produced in a horror of blood <laughs> by Andy Goddard and Ella Watts. For shows, merchandise, and more, check our website, theunseenhour. <clears throat> it is unseenhour.com. We all look forward to seeing you here again at the Unseen Hour.
do not adjust your device. You will hear what you will hear, and understand less. In a dimension vast and eternal beyond imagining, there is both space and time for all. Fact, truth, reality. We cling to the solidity of these things, imploring them to be objective and permanent. But they will dissolve and vanish, leaving us untethered and alone. Accept, then, that your reality now is no more or less than just what I write here, upon the unseen hour. The hills to the east of the coastal town of Quelmouth rise to rain-slicked cliffs, dark cliffs that crumble into the sea, and over those cliffs, rising still higher, stands a castle, and in that castle's unnecessarily large surgical amphitheater, one tweed-clad gentleman inventor, fourth class, takes the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the strange, fantastical, and awful story of how I, Lord Rufus Strideforth, gentleman inventor and the 13th Baron of Gristleburg, awoke one morning from triumphant dreams to find myself changed into a genius! Now, you may notice behind me on this here very stage two curious little chambers. Modest in size, yes, if they were destined for use as a pantry or a smoking room, but each fully ample enough to accommodate the grisliest of bears. Pause for gasps. Um, Rufus Love. It's a, it's a pause for gasps, really, there, Balthazar, rather than questions, really. The, 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 the audience will be here soon. Well, I suppose while we've stopped, what, 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 what? Um, what? Yes, it just, just occurs to me that this reference to bears, is it... Apt, exactly. Is it apropos? Are we not setting up expectations that will not be met? Assuming, of course, that the absence of bears in your demonstration. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, but, but there could be bears, Balthazar, my dear man. There could be. But will there be? No. No, there will not. I resume. This is the astonishing scientific discovery. Nay, invention. Nay, creation that I have achieved. Nothing less than the instantaneous translocation of a living creature. Like a bear. Not in this instance a bear, no. Although I maintain it could be a bear. Ha <laughs> ha. From one chamber to the other. And by this process, which I call... Focused frequency fabric ferrying by Fustian phenomena, or f Not only shall we be able to travel from one location to another instantaneously, but we shall arrive feeling as if we've had a full meal and a good night's sleep. How does that sound, eh? It's a, it's a little far-fetched, if I'm honest, love. Quite the desired effect. For you see, this is where the next part comes in. I need a volunteer. Oh, well, I'm afraid I seem to be the only one. Uh, me? Yeah. Uh, me? Yeah. Oh, I, no, I'd, I'd rather not. I, no. Come on. Oh. Ah, yes, come along, brothers. Ah, they'll be here any minute. We must at least test it out. Oh, well, right up, boss. This way. Here we go. Ah, uh, yeah, now just step in here. Uh, now, you're not really going to... And he is gone! Gone, ladies and gentlemen! Disappeared like tears in the rain. Only to reappear completely intact. Here! Hooray! The music and dancing, everyone cheers! Oh, dear God, no! No! There must have been some terrible error! Balthazar, no! What have you done? Why must you choose just this moment to transmutate yourself into the likeness of some horrid Lucius Naturae? Oh, Balthazar, you swine. Your oh, elegant tail coated. It scarcely fits about your bulbous carapace. Oh, no. No! No, Balthazar! To 
you're not presentable at all, and our guests are about to arrive. You will, you always do this to me, Balthazar. I must, I must check the setting. This, this, this cannot be a side effect of the device. No, no. <sighs> yes, well, at least admit I was right about the sense of rest and repeatness, Balthazar. What is it, Francis? The guests are here, sir. Catastrophe! Send them in, Francis! Balthazar! This way! Quickly! Keep your mandibles to yourself! In there! Don't touch my coats! Phew! <laughs> my friends! Hello, my, my peers! My admirers! My, my fans! Ah, oh, look! E- even the journalist! That very journalist who will tell the world all that transpires here! Yes, indeed! Widely read popular science essayist and proud of it! Travelled up here in hopes of seeing something worth about which it will be too corresponding about in company of this famous philanthropist and her assistant. What a disappointment. This army general and her raid. Sure thing. And this venerable old scientist. (laughs) All of us having been promised a miraculous revelation. How about that? Marvellous. Yes. Uh Oh, only one, only one thing. The 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 the, the miraculous, as, as as you know, is notoriously unpredictable, and so and so it it's cancelled. Um, there, there's been a problem with the fuses. My 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 invention is so wonderful and good that it it throws the breakers and and all the lights turn off. You you'll you have to to come back another time. Oh, what a waste of time. He's a charlatan, a charlatan, I say. <laughs> What a disappointment. Oh, the public will hear about this stride forth. You'll be a laughing stock cancelling like this. What? No! Uh, di- 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 did I say cancel? No, 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 not not at all. I, I meant, I meant, I meant, um, uh... Run away! What a disappointment. Oh, stride forth! Poor, poor stride forth, how misfortunate you are! And through no fault of your own! <sighs> oh, Balthazar, they don't understand. Do, do, do you hear the things they're saying about me? They, they should be celebrating me, adoring me! I'm, I'm, so, I'm so clever! And I'm so good and, and kind! And all my inventions are so interesting, but they don't appreciate me, Balthazar! Exactly! Quite so. <sighs> you know, sometimes I, I sometimes I just feel like I'm, I'm always doomed to bad luck. Bad things always happen to me, to, to me. You can't imagine Balthazar. The, the universe just likes to, to kick at me all the time. It's so cruel. Nothing ever goes right for me. Oh, oh embrace me, Balthazar. Uh, you reckon he wanted us to follow him? Who knows? The man's a lunatic. Five English pounds says he's just hiding in the closet. What a disappointment. Well, let's take a look. (laughs) What kind of profane sciences are you practicing? This is against the laws of nature, man, and and the law of... the law! What a disappointment. Rufus Stradforth, your name will live in infamy for this. That's what? It's in infamy? <laughs> I, uh, I, mean, I mean, I I mean, um, how dare you? Yes, how, how dare you? I, I, I invite you to my home to, 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 to hear, to, to, to share my hospitality and see my, my wondrous invention, which, of course, I will be showing you soon enough with, with, with the assistance of this poor afflicted orphan. Who I have taken in and cared for as if it was my very own child. Why, I, I am the, the finest of humanitarians, of philanthropists, and you do me a disservice not to recognize it and praise me. Then this is not some scientific abomination. Oh, how could you know this is not some, some scientific abomination? I would cover his ears if I, if, I, if I knew where his ears were. And your inventions are not just... Bologna. It's pronounced Bologna, and no, no, they're not Bologna, certainly not. 
So you do have summit to show us. Only the most significant scientific advancement of the last millennium. What a disappointment. No, it's true. It's all true. Allow me to demonstrate. Focused frequency fabric ferrying by Faustian phenomena. Off. This way. No, just up. Yep, here we The press should be the first to see my machine up close, don't you agree? Yes, I would I would have you to inspect the interior, Miss Powerstar. Oh, yeah, it's quite something, isn't it? <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yes. Now, now if I were to, to operate it, I would I would close the door like like so. And I would uh, I would go on to operate the controls, like so. Well I'll be. Where'd she go? Good question, why not take a look inside? I will. Trick. Oh, uh, me next. Yes, why not? Did you go? The buffer. Ah, <laughs> yes, I, I see you suspect some trickery, Professor, you old fox. But I ask you, how, 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 how can there be a trap door? Do you see one? Do you see one in there, sir? Or is it simply my own impeccable science? Go, go, look. Oh, good lord. There's more of those giant insect things. Four more of them. What's going on here, Strideforth? I'm beginning to suspect foul play. <laughs> oh, no. Now, listen, I, I can see you're both a, a little anxious, but don't worry. All will be explained. Perhaps a, a small glass of brandy to, to steady the nerves. Francis, the brandy! The special brandy. The <laughs> That's the one! Thank you. I'd never touch the stuff. Ah, oh, really? That, that's a pity. A pity? Why so? Because if she's not drugged, I can't really put her in the machine. Drugged? But... Oh, I see. What a disappointment. You won't get me that easily, Baron Strideforth. You see, I observed your peculiar behaviour, and I suspected that something of this nature... <coughs> oh! Francis, you've done it again! <laughs> oh, Diamond Gem, you wonder! You've you've come to right out! Yes, sir. Brained her here with... What was that, a, a vase? An urn, sir. <laughs> oh, jolly good! Very good! Yes, now, now, quick, quick, help me, get him into the machine! <laughs> here, 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 here. <sighs> Yes, well, you know, I, I think this evening has been has been a great success, despite all the odds. And <laughs> you agree with me? Yes, yes. Look at them all. Very good, sir. And will there be anything else? Mm. Sir? Oh yes, it's just one more thing. Yes. Uh. Get in the cage, would you, Jim? Very good, sir. <laughs> yes! Yes, that's right! Dance! Music! Now the music and the dancing! <laughs> that's right, my friends! Dance with me! Dance with me! Love me! And so, at least for a little while, a reclusive eccentric feels the thrill of success and acceptance. He is embraced by the shuffling monstrosities that he himself begat. Abominations who, in a happier form, found themselves powerless to evade the abhorrent metamorphoses of the Unseen Hour. This mini-episode of The Unseen Hour, The Dance of the Gigantic Vermin, was recorded by Headley Knights and Beth Crane of Battlebird Productions and edited by Ella Watts. It was performed by Bryce Trafford, Joey Timmons and James Carney. Learn more about The Unseen Hour at unseenhour.com and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We look forward to welcoming you back to The Unseen Hour.
And that's this week's show. Please be sure to check the Sonic Society homepage at sonicsociety.org for upcoming news and episodes from the Sonic Society part of the Mutual Audio Network at mutualaudionetwork.com. Find us on Facebook through Sonic Society or Audio Drama Radio Drama Lovers and on Twitter. Until next Sunday, when we'll have more exciting new audio drama to share with you, I'm David Alt. And I'm Jack Ward. Have a pleasant day. Good day. The Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. Hey everyone, it's Mark from Leap Audio. I'm here to tell you about something really exciting. July 24 through 26 of 2020, Halifax, Nova Scotia, we are gathering together in the world's first international modern audio drama convention and family reunion. Inspired in part by the living, loving memory of our dear friend Bill Hallwake, we're bringing together writers, producers, actors, and our fans for workshops, seminars, and even live performances. So join us, won't you? Go to madcon.com. That's www.mad-con.com for more information. I hope to see you in Halifax in 2020.